Hey ladies and gents, how are you today? Happy Friday for those that are watching the video on Friday. Uh, what I'd like to do is take this uh, first chapter and sort of chunk the uh, lecture into uh, just a few smaller sections so you have a chance to uh, sort of go through and consider a section, take a break, and then move on. So let's just jump right in. What we're going to do is start with the name of the course, Anatomy and Physiology. Now, anatomy... Um, maybe a more obvious term, it's referring to sort of how the parts of the body are built. So anatomy always references structure. Physiology, on the other hand, means function, what these parts actually do, how they work. So the important relationship to always recall here is that structure influences function. How something is built influences how it's going to work. And a great example is the human elbow. So if we look at your humerus, that's the bone in the arm here. At the end, it's got sort of a rounded spot called the trochlea. And then the ulna, your elbow, has a C-shaped section called the trochlear notch. So because the ulna has that C-shaped uh, notch, it allows your elbow to open and close. Now the radius, the other bone in your forearm, sort of on the thumb side, it has a rounded head. So what it does is allows the radius to pivot. So because of the way these two bones, uh, or these three bones in your elbow are structured, you can open and close your elbow like a hinge, and, oops, sorry, I learned how the camera works here, turn your hand over uh, like that. So structure is always going to influence function. So that's one of the key ideas of the course. In this section, I'd like to spend the bulk of our time looking at just an overview of the different organ systems. You guys have that systems poster that's going to be due on Wednesday of next week. And that systems poster uh, has you do an overview of what the basic uh, organs uh, systems do. So this uh, lecture is a nice summary that will help you out with that assignment. So let's start on the outside and work our way in. We begin with the integumentary system. The integumentary system is in essence your skin and then the associated glands and blood vessels and nerve endings, stuff like that. So your skin is a protective coating on the outside of the body that prevents pathogens like bacteria, viruses, molds, fungi, stuff like that from getting in. Uh, additionally, it plays a, a homeostatic uh, mechanism by helping you cool down uh, with sweating and through changes that we'll talk about later in the blood vessels. Uh, additionally, you can also detect what's going on outside the body through uh, receptors in the skin for light touch, deep pressure, and pain. Your skeletal system is made of bones. You know, bones sort of get the, the bulk of the attention, but there are also uh, ligaments that stitch the bones together, and then cartilages that help uh, the bones move uh, around one another. And the job of the skeletal system is sort of multi-purpose. It provides support and protection to the body, protects things like the, the brain, the heart, the lungs. Um, you can store uh, nutrients uh, like potassium and calcium, and you actually produce your blood cells in the ends of some of the bones of your body. Your muscular system is pretty straightforward. It has one job, and that's to contract. And when we refer to the muscular system, we're talking about skeletal muscles that are attached to your bones. So when those muscles contract, they move the bones. When they move the bones, it moves you. Your nervous system your nervous system consists of your brain and spinal cord and then the nerves that are running around the body. And what they do is detect what's occurring inside and outside the body. They send those messages to the brain and spinal cord. Their decisions get made on how to respond. And then sort of electrical instructions are sent out to muscles and glands so your body can do something. Your circulatory system. Your circulatory system is basically a series of tubes and then a pump. So your heart acts like the pump, and then you have blood vessels traveling throughout the body. You've got about 60,000 miles of blood vessels in your body. Uh, you're made of about 10 trillion cells. And so to get materials to those cells quickly, to take wastes away quickly, you need to have blood vessels that are basically like little roads running, running right up against those cells. So your heart pumps about 5 liters of blood around your body every single minute of your life. And what happens is that blood transports nutrients, waste products, gases, white blood cells for protection, and it delivers that stuff right up against those cells. Um, your endocrine system. Your endocrine system is a hormonal system that um, releases hormones that help regulate the body to maintain homeostasis. 
So they are a chemical signal rather than an electrical signal. It's a chemical signal that causes the body to respond in certain ways. Uh, your lymphatic system. This is a, a system of the body that people oftentimes will overlook. It's sort of like the sewer system of the body. Um, you have 60,000 miles of blood vessels that transport all this blood, but it's a really leaky system. So you're constantly having fluid leak out of your circulatory system. So to collect that fluid, uh, we have another set of tubes called lymphatic vessels that collect that fluid back and send it back to your circulatory system. Uh, it does some other things along the way that we'll talk about next semester. Your digestive system. You're made of materials from your previous meals. You know, people talk about you already eat, it's absolutely the case. Uh, so what your digestive system does is take material from outside the body and breaks it down and then it allows you to absorb it into your body and then it becomes a part of you. So the digestive system is really cool because it takes stuff from outside of you and allows it to become part of you. So it's this compartmentalized system. It's pretty interesting. Again, we'll get into it next semester, but it basically takes in materials, breaks it down, and then allows you to absorb it into your bloodstream. Your respiratory system. It's another system that has one function, gas exchange. Um, your cells produce carbon dioxide, which is toxic to the body. So your cells, they dump it in the river. They dump that carbon dioxide into your blood. Your cells also need oxygen to make ATP to keep you running. So your lungs are an interface that allow really rapid transfusion or transmission of gases. You blow CO2 out with each breath and take oxygen in with each breath. And so, again, respiratory system will get it to do. Your urinary system. Uh, again, you've got this five liters of blood and it's collecting waste. Uh, from 10 trillion cells so your blood can literally start to become toxic so your kidneys will actually filter your blood every couple of minutes uh, your kidneys will filter all the blood in your body and it will reduce or it will remove waste from your blood and then store it in your bladder as urine and then you get it outside the body and then of course the reproductive system we've got a system that functions primarily to make new organisms so the, the key functions of uh, the female male reproductive systems, uh, in addition to, uh, you know, making uh, hormones for, you know, responses of the body, it's to make egg and sperm. So when the egg and sperm combine, hey, you get a brand new organism. All right. So here's just a quick question to end this section. If you disrupt the respiratory system, what impact would that have on the function of the circulatory system? So please take a moment to ponder. Okay, so thinking about these sort of uh, interactions between systems is going to be the main task of a, a paper you're going to write next week over the body systems. So the, the big idea here is to recognize that one system has impacts on other systems. So they're all interrelated. All right, so what we'll do is pause here and...